Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to your sanctuary that we could worship you, that we could be edified by your word, that we could pray our prayers, that we could sing your praises. Help us, Lord, to grow in faith and trust in you as Lord and Savior. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let me just share with you that this being Bible Sunday, I've got my Bible here in my arms, and I'm asking all of you to take seriously the gift that has been entrusted to us. This Bible of ours is a window into just how much our God loves and cares about us, what God is all about, and what our relationship to him is really all about. And so as we look at our Bibles, why don't we focus just for a moment on this gospel passage, because in it there are some tremendous food for our spiritual walk. The first thing I'd like to share with you about reading our Bibles is the importance of context. Have you ever had a Bible passage thrown at you, taken out of context, and it really is misinterpreted? Well, context is vitally important, and today's Gospel is a great example of that. It begins with the Apostles asking Jesus to bless them with more faith. And then he goes on, Jesus does in response, to say, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed. But let me put it in context for you. Just prior to the apostles making this request, Jesus was teaching them about forgiveness. And the depth of God's forgiveness and how we are called to be like Christ in our forgiving of our brothers and sisters. If your brother or sister, so Christ says, comes to you seven times in the same day with a repentant heart asking your forgiveness, you are to forgive them. And with that, the apostles responded, Oh, Lord, please give us more faith. Help us to be more like you. Because if you're like me, and we like the very human apostles, all right, listen, we give you a chance. We give you a second chance, maybe even a third. But come four or five, forget it. But not so with Christ. And it's up to us to strive toward our Christ-likeness. No, Jesus is showing his disciples the depth of his forgiving, redeeming love. And so context, as we continue in this gospel passage, becomes so important, and I don't know if you caught it, but when I was reading the gospel, I tried to muster as stern a response when, he, when Jesus said, you should have faith as a mustard seed. And I did that on purpose because think of how different it is and how much more in harmony with what we know of the heart and the love of Christ to respond to this request of the apostles with a loving tone. My dear friends, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can do miracles. You can just say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted, and it would be uprooted and planted in the sea and grow. You can see how that has a whole different sense to it. 
And it continues in this gospel passage as we, Jesus goes on to talk to them about their Christ-like service and life. And he uses the relationship between a master and slave. And the context or historical setting was that at that time, there were slaves all over. And it was a normal thing. So Jesus used that to bring forth the meaning of the conversation, which was, if you have tasted of my love, if you've experienced the forgiveness of God and been redeemed and your life has been made new in Christ, well, then you know in your heart that you can't do anything but live a life of grateful service. It's just what we who have been forgiven need to do. We just are so thankful and loving of our Lord that we just want to live our lives in praise and thanksgiving. And so at the end, we don't get a pat on the back. We're just doing what we have to do. Can't do it any other way. We just live our lives in grateful thanksgiving and praise of the God who has redeemed me and saved my life. I pray that that's the way you read it. And then to understand how important it is to have at least a little faith. That's all you need. Just a little faith when things are so difficult and struggle so hard that you just look to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm scared and I'm struggling, but please help me. I put my trust in you. How many of us over the course of time haven't come to trust in our Lord. And that's such an important point. Do you know that in Martin Luther's time, Latin was the big intellectual language? And so for faith, the word fides, you might have heard from Luther, sola fides, solely through faith. But did you know that Martin Luther worked with that idea and actually substituted a different Latin term, fiducia, which comes from fides, but it means trust, personal trust. Fides would be belief in or aspiring to a set of principles, perhaps, or beliefs. Where fiducia is personal trust in the one who is the truth, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is at the center and heart of what our Christian faith is all about. Our living faith and trust in a living God. Jesus Christ lives. We have that record in the Bible, right? That's what it's all about, that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. And in that rising, we are assured his forgiveness. So for us to be able to trust in Jesus, that we are his dearly loved children, we have the confidence because Christ loves us. And we know that because he was willing to die for us. How many of us wouldn't say, oh, geez, I believe that maybe God loves you and is blessing you, but I've got this dark cloud hanging over me because I've done so much wrong, I don't expect God to love me at all. Well, I promise you that Christ does love you and proved it 
by willing to go to the cross and on that cross say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And so have confidence. Have a little faith that you are truly loved and blessed by God and that he's watching over you. And I know that there are times that are struggles and difficult. It's as if you are clouded or that the smoke is so thick that you can't see God. My God, my God, why are you so far away from me? Why don't you hear my prayers? How many of us haven't felt that way? But believe it, or, well, try your best to continue to believe that God is there even when we can't sense his presence. It characterized by this little girl who was caught in her house on fire, and she was on the second floor, and her eyes were stinging from the black smoke that engulfed that whole second floor, but she made it to the window where her father down outside yells up to her, jump and I will catch you. And she cries back, but I can't see you. And he responds, but I can see you and that's all that matters. And with that, the little girl threw herself out the window. And sure enough, her father with loving, strong arms caught her. Think of yourselves as that little girl, trusting and having that blind leap of faith into your Savior's loving arms. Isn't that a glorious picture of what it's really all about? Because there are times when the struggles of our life make it difficult for us to trust and believe that God is still there. Let me give you an example. Because we who have faith, sometimes we're shaken in our boots. I may, God bless you who have heard this story before, maybe more than once, but it's just so perfect for this focus. It turns out that uh, uh, quite a few years ago, I had the opportunity to join a team of guys on a round Long Island sailboat race, the round Long Island regatta. And we had the most beautiful start to this race. We went through the ocean with a beautiful wind and just sailed down wonderfully. Rounded Montauk came through the plum gut and the fog set in so thick that we couldn't see the front of the boat from the back of the boat. And I'm telling you, usually when there's thick fog like that, it's calm. And at least the boat's not going anywhere, so you're basically okay. But in this circumstance, the wind was blowing. So we're heading off into the abyss of the fog, and we hear the foghorn deep from a big ship. And now we're a little nervous. So somebody's out on the bow, blowing a whistle. And another guy is, is ringing a bell and everybody's eyes are peeled trying to see where this ship is because it's louder. And we're getting closer and they're blowing the whistle. Then we start hearing the rumble of the motor. And we know that this thing is close. And the next thing you know, right in front of us, a great big black wall of steel the side of this ship with three crewmen on the rail waving at us. Oh, my Lord, believe me, we had faith. We were praying out loud. But we were also scared. I bet they knew exactly. You know what it was? They had us on radar. And they knew exactly where, they, where we were. And I'll bet they even came a little close just to throw us a little scare. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but, folks, the moral of the story, God has us 
on radar. And when the struggles of our lives cloud our vision and we are crying out, Lord, my God, why are you so far from me? Trust and believe that your God is powerful to save. That He is there. And He is taking care. And you're going to be all right. Even unto life eternal. For there is life in His name. He proved it with His resurrection. And that, my friends, changes everything. So I pray that you've got at least a little bit of faith in the God that has all the power. And I know that it is enough. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.